Next, we are going to talk about the identity access management into the Google Cloud. So, so far what we have done is like we have registered ourselves to the Google Cloud and with that registration, we got our first Google Cloud account. And with that account, we also got the honor permission. And the honor permission is a very wide permission. With the honor permission, you can do anything with your Google Cloud account. And when you're actually working in the industry, then with the uh, DevOps practices, you should not use the Honor account. Instead, you should create uh, like a different account and onboard the user uh, onto your Google Cloud with a limited set of permission so that they can perform certain uh, tasks within the permission boundaries which you have set using the identity and access management within the Google Cloud. Let's take a look how the identity access management works. So it follows the principle of a three W's. The three W's I'm talking about is who, what, and where. So who, who means the principal or a user who is trying to access the Google Cloud account. What, what means the roles and the permissions. What are the roles and permission you have associated with that particular user so that he can perform certain tasks and where that is the thing and where he is going to perform those actions. So these are the three key attributes which you need to consider whenever you are creating IAM user and roles assignment to that particular user. Here is one example on how to manage the permission. So here on the left hand side, you can see this is the honor account through which we have registered or through which you have got your first uh, cloud account on a Google and that account has an honor permission. So he or she has access to the full Google Cloud account. He can do anything or she can do anything with your Google Cloud account. But on the right hand side, there is a new developer and that developer, we don't want to give the honor permission, but we want to restrict that particular developer and what kind of a restriction we can impose uh, for that particular developer. So here you can see uh, the first restriction I would like to impose is delete billing. So I don't want that developer to delete the billing or modify the billing. I only want that developer to create a virtual machine, manage databases or create a custom roles. So these these are the few set of permission I just wanted to assign to that particular developer. So this is just a very uh, random example I have taken, but the customization which you can do with your roles and permission is endless. Even you can assign only the read only permission. So with that user will be only able to view on the Google console, but he will not be able to create or modify any existing resource. Now let's talk about what are the basic roles which is given by the Google Cloud for us to use inside our Google Cloud account. So right now the basic roles which has been uh, created by Google for us is the honor role which I have already explained uh, which you get as soon as you create your Google Cloud account. Then the second role is the editor role and the third one is the viewer role. So these are the most basic roles which are provided by a Google for us. So editor as you can see he can do quite a lot of things but a viewer role is only allowing you to view the things. So which has a more limited permission rather than the editor. So these are the few basic roles which has been provided by Google for us to consume. But don't worry, we are going to take a more insight, insider look onto these particular roles in the future chapter. But here I'm just uh, providing you the background on these concepts so that you feel more comfortable whenever we are working with the multiple accounts within the Google Cloud. And these are the essential concept which is really necessary for you to understand. Let's take a demo to understand this concept of adding a user with the limited permission set and the limited permission set we are going to take is the editor role and how we can onboard or how we can add a user to our existing Google Cloud account. So here you can see this is my Google Cloud account homepage and here you can see this is the master account through which I have registered which is this one. Okay. Now here onto the search box, you can easily type IAM and that will take you to the IAM section. So click on this one. And here you can see, first of all, that you have only one account, which is onboarded to Google cloud account with the honor permission. Okay. And there is no any other, which is any other user, which is onboarded to use the Google cloud services.
So first of all, we want to onboard a, another developer onto this Google Cloud account. And then secondly, we are going to associate the permission. So first take a look how we can onboard that particular user. So to do that, what you need to do, you just need to click on to the grant access over here. So click on this grant access button. And here on the right hand side, you can see the first thing which you will notice over here, it is asking for a principal. So principal could be a real human user or a technical user, technical user or a service account. We are going to talk later, but at this moment, let's consider this principal is a human user user. So what is the human user? So here we need to enter the principal email ID because you need to know the email so that uh, you can onboard that particular user. So here I'm going to enter the user email address. So here I'm going to enter my personal Google account, which I want to onboard to this particular Google Cloud setup. So this is the user which I want to onboard. Then here on the bottom, you will see assigned roles. So here we need to assign the role to this particular user. And as I have told you, there are certain basic uh, roles which we can choose. So here uh, from the drop down, you can just click on editor. And here you can see this is the editor role which is available. So I will just gonna select that one and click on save this particular user. So again, I'm repeating. So here we have added a user and we have assigned the role to that particular user. And after that, we are gonna click save. And as soon as you save it, then here you will see two entries. One is your honor account through which you have registered the Google Cloud. And this is the new user which you have onboarded. And once you have onboarded that user from the IAM setup, then also keep in mind that you have given the user to permission to access this particular project, which is this one. Okay. So now what I will do, I will just uh, open a new uh, private window. And in that private window, I'm going to log in through this particular account and see whether I'm able to access this particular project or not. The project I'm talking about is this one, this particular project my first project. And in that project, we are going to check few permissions and uh, then verify whether that user has got the editor role or not. Here is my new uh, browser window with uh, incognito mode. And here I'm going to click on the sign in option. And here I'm going to use my email ID, which is uh, rahul 123 vag at the red gmail.com. Click on next over here. And here I need to enter the password. So here I'm going to enter the password of my account. Then click on next. And here I am able to access my uh, Google Cloud account. So here on the top, you will see an option for a console. So click on this particular option, which is console. And here at the bottom, I will just accept this cookie message. All right, so now I have logged into my Google account with the uh, email ID, which I have given a certain editor permission. And here on the top, you will see, first of all, let's verify whether I'm able to access the same project or not. So here you can see I'm able to access the same project on which I have granted the permission, okay? After that, uh, there are a few things I would like to check over here is, the permission set. So let's try to check the permission set. Uh, so let's look for a virtual machine, click on the virtual machine. And here, uh, first of all, let's select the project. So I have selected this particular project. And here you can see the compute uh, engine API. So here I can click on enable and that will enable me the compute engine and through which I can create the virtual machine. Also, if that example is also not sufficient, then I can show you one more example to verify the permission set, which is a cloud run. Click on the cloud run. And here you can see I can click on deploy container. And here I can choose and deploy the container uh, within the cloud run. What I'm trying to say over here is with the editor permission, I am able to deploy the compute services, which is a cloud run, which is also a virtual machine. Although I have not deployed yet, but I just wanted to show you that this is enabled for me. These kind of a permissions are enabled. But then you might have a question that what kind of a services are disabled for you. Then in that case, I'm going to show you one more thing, which is I am. 
So IAM permission sets are very uh, like a restrictive and only few users have the permission to modify those. So here, as soon as I open this one, then here you can see that grant access button is disabled for me. Here you can see grant access and remove access. And that permissions are only associated with the uh, honor account, which is this one. So right now I have logged in with this particular user ID and as you can see over here that I am not allowed to change those things or cannot I cannot add any other user. So what I'm trying to prove over here is you can create these kind of a roles. Right now I have shown you the very basic role but you can customize those roles and uh, you can assign those roles to certain user to restrict their access so that you can have a more than one two or ten even hundreds of developers working onto your Google Cloud. So this is the basic concept of how you manage the IAM roles and permission. Don't worry, further down the chapter, we are going to take a look on to more uh, in-depth how to create your role, how to customize your role, how to create your own role with your own custom permissions with the custom names. Everything we are going to take a look more uh, onto these later.